Welcome to the Tips for Manufacturing video training for Mastercam X8 covering 2D HST toolpaths. Hello, my name is Mike Matera. I'll be walking you through this series of lessons. Now the first thing we're going to do is start by opening one of our sample files. So if you'll go to File and Open and go to the folder where you installed our sample files. The folder name should be 2D HST X8. I have mine installed in my Mastercam MCX folder. In that folder I want you to find Peel and Blend and open that file up. Now if your shading is not active you can come up here and select Shaded and also select Outline Shaded which is currently how my image is viewed on my screen. So as I mentioned we're going to be covering the 2D HST toolpaths. So we assume that you already know how to navigate the Mastercam environment. Now in this part we've already selected a machine and a machine group. We have a toolpath group and there's even a toolpath in here already. It's a simple contour that just cuts away this rounded corner. And that's so that we can focus on machining this face and this face. Now we will be going into the properties a little bit but again that is something that was covered in more detail on our introduction to Mastercam X8 CD. So let's talk about the 2D HST toolpaths. Well if I come over here now to toolpaths and pull down the menu I can find 2D high speed and in there you'll find dynamic mill and dynamic contour. Underneath that you have area, peel and blend. Now if you're familiar with X7 or X6 you'll know that there were a lot more choices in this menu previously. What Mastercam has done in X8 is consolidated all of those toolpaths into these two. So most of the time you're going to pick the dynamic toolpath and just by selecting different boundaries and parameters create a number of different toolpaths from within that. But for these lessons we're going to start with the basics. We're going to be talking about peel and blend. Now to be honest with you, I don't think you're going to use peel and blend very often. But they are pretty neat and sometimes they will come in handy. So we're just going to show you how they work and get it out of the way and it's a good chance for us to get a basic introduction to what it means to do 2D high speed tool pass. Now we're going to start with the peel and you might be able to tell from this icon that there are some looping tool paths involved there. So let's pick peel and it wants us to select a chain. So right now all I have is this solid model and we are going to select our chain directly from the solids. I need this set to edges. I want to pick as a loop. I do not want to pick a face. And I want to pick a partial loop, meaning I don't expect it to go all the way around. For the peel tool path, basically you're going to pick a left channel and a right channel and you're going to drive the toolpath through the opening that those two curves create. Now to make this a little easier to pick, I'm going to rotate around a little bit and maybe zoom up on this and I want to pick from the beginning of this edge. Now it's verifying that it picked the correct face and yes it did so I'll OK that and it wants me to pick the end point because I'm doing a partial loop and the end point is going to be right here. So now I have that as my first single chain. So I'm going to rotate this around so we can get the other one. And I want to zoom up on this a little bit. And again, we're going to be picking from this edge. I want to pick closest to where I'm going to start. I'm going to tell it to grab the other face. And for my end point, I want to end over here. I'm going to right click and go back to an isometric view and we'll OK this. Now for our chain geometry it shows in our machining regions that we have one. Basically that's because it's picking off of one solid. It doesn't matter that we have two curves. If we went into our list it would just show us here a solid single chain. But we can see on here that there are definitely two chains. 
So we are set to peel mill. We're going to go to toolpath and I want you to pick the half inch flat end mill. Well this seems kind of low. I'm going to change this to one thousandths per tooth and we're going to add a comment that says peel mill. Now we'll take a look at our cutting parameters. So this is the heart of the 2D HST tool pass. These parameters right here are really what's making it happen. You can see in the illustration it's going to move in, peel off the edge, and then loop around and then keep peeling off its way as it works through the channel. So here it shows us a step over of 50 percent. Now this value probably came from a tool setting. If we took a look at our tool, we double click on that, and then we take a look at our properties here, we have a rough step in X and Y of 50 percent. So that's where it got that value from. Let's go back to that. The idea of high-speed tool paths is a little bit different than the way things would have been machined in the past. In the past, you would have done a wide step over of cut and a shallow depth of cut. So here in this illustration, you can see a one-inch end mill taking a 350 thousandths depth of cut and taking a 60 percent width of cut so a 60 percent of the diameter step over. What we want to do with the high speed tool paths is take a long depth of cut and a shallow width of cut. So I'm going to make my step over amount 14 percent of the diameter of the tool which is a 70 thousand step over. So it's going to step in 70 thousandths and cut across and then loop off with this radius amount and then go to the starting point for the next cut and loop in for that cut. Now when it's making that loop off of the workpiece it's going to lift up off the bottom of the part by ten thousandths and when it moves back to the starting point it's going to move back at a feed rate of a hundred inches per minute. I'm going to change my stock amounts here to zero. So the advantage of a tool path like this is that we're taking a shallow width of cut and a longer depth of cut. And that's the next thing we're going to have to change. We want to make sure that it's cutting at least the full diameter for the depth. In some cases, you can go twice the diameter. Of course, you need to check with your tooling manufacturers to find the best recommendations for their tooling. So let's go to our linking parameters. Our depth is incremental in relationship to the edge that we picked. Now, because that edge is right at the bottom of this surface, and we have our depth set incrementally to zero, it means we're going to be right on that edge. Top of stock is absolute zero. Our feed plane will be a hundred thousandths above that, and we have a retract height that's at an absolute quarter inch. So let's OK this and take a quick look at that toolpath. There we can see the looping moving its way through that channel. 